Line balancing is a very useful technique in operations management. In this video, I'm going to use an example to show you how line balancing works. In general, line balancing takes five steps. First, we're going to identify task times and precedence relationships. In our Excel project, this part will be uh, provided. Second, we are going to determine cycle time, and then determine the theoretical minimum number of workstations. In step four, we are going to assign tasks to different workstations. In the end, we are going to compute efficiency. OK, let's jump to our example right away. This is an example about pizza assembly. In this process, there are eight tasks called A, B, C, D, all the way to H. For example, task E is adding pepperoni. Pay attention to the third column, task time. In the textbook, there are some mistakes in this figure 5.11. For example, the correct task time for B is 30 seconds instead of 40 seconds. The correct task time for F is 22 seconds instead of 25. And the correct time for H is 23 seconds instead of 10. But the sum of all the task time remains to be 245 seconds. Next, let's take a look at preceding task. For A, there's no preceding task. What does it mean? It means the entire pizza assembly process starts with task A. And for task B, it follows A. It means we have to wait until task A is completed before we can work on task B, and so on and so forth. Let's take a look at task G. Task G has three preceding tasks. D, E, F. What it tells us is we got to finish D, E, and F before we can work on G. And another thing I want to bring to your attention is task D, E, and F. They have the common preceding task C. That implies we can work on D, E, and F simultaneously. Now let's take a look at the precedence relationships. In this figure 5.12, it nicely summarizes the uh, precedence relationship among all those tasks. As we can see clearly that we start with A, B follows A, C follows B, D, E, F follows C, and G follows all of D, E, and F. And in the end, it's task H, which follows G. Next, let's take a look how we determine cycle time. Cycle time is defined to be the amount of time allowed to complete work at each workstation. The formula for calculating cycle time is available production time per day divided by desired number of units per day. Let's use some numbers and see how this formula works. In our pizza operation example, let's say it operates 8 hours a day. 8 hours a day are equivalent to 28,800 seconds. And let's say we would like to produce 300 pizzas per day. And based on the formula for calculating cycle time, in this example, the cycle time will be equal to 28,800 seconds per day divided by 300 pizzas per day. So we get 96 seconds per pizza. That is to say, in order to make sure we can produce 300 pizzas per day, we got to be able to make one pizza in 96 seconds. In the next step, step 3, we're going to calculate the theoretical minimum number of workstations. Let's use notation n, represent theoretical minimum number of workstations. The formula for calculating A is sum of task times divided by cycle time. In our example, the sum of all task times come out as 245 seconds. And cycle time 
as we saw on the previous slide, is 96 seconds. So n is equal to 2.55 stations. But as we all know, this number should be an integer. In this case, we are going to need a minimum of three work stations. Now we are ready to work on step four, assigning tasks to workstations. The bottom line over here is to make sure that the sum of task times at any station does not exceed the cycle time. In practice, there are different rules of thumb applied. Uh, here we are going to use longest task time rule. It means we are going to select a task with the longest task time. I'm going to demonstrate how this works in the Excel worksheet. In this Excel worksheet, I've already prepared some basic information. For our convenience, I pasted the basic information over here, which is from figure 5.11. Be careful, I've corrected three numbers in this figure. Now let's see how to assign tasks to different workstations. Here we are having an underlying assumption that is each workstation is capable of doing each of those eight tasks. In addition, they are equally efficient. Okay, let's start with workstation one. What would be the eligible task? Because everything starts with task A, so the only task that is eligible is going to be task A. As a result, we have to assign task A to station 1. How long does task A take? It is 60 seconds. OK, cumulative time, we start from 0. So the cumulative time is going to be nothing but 60 seconds as well. What about idle time at station 1? So far, we have assigned task A to station 1. And we know cycle time is 96 seconds. So the idle time is going to be 96 minus cumulative time, 60 seconds. That means after assigning task A to station 1, station 1 still has 36 seconds capacity available. OK, next, which task will be eligible? Well, it's going to be task B, because after we finish A, we have to work on task B before we can do anything else. OK, eligible task B, there's only one choice, so we have to assign B to station 1. How long does task B take? 30 seconds. The cumulative time is going to be 60 plus 30. We get 90 seconds. After assigning task B to station 1 as well, the idle time is going to be 96 minus 90. OK, here I'm just going to use the formula I did in cell F3, copy-paste idle time 6 seconds in station 1. And let's take a look at all those task times. There's nothing else station 1 can do because it has only 6 seconds left. So we have to move on to station 2. Eligible task is going to be task C. And no choice, we are just going to have to assign C to station 2. And C takes 35 seconds because that's the first task we assign to station 2. Cumulative time will be 35. Idle time after assigning C to station 2 will be 96 minus 35, 61 seconds. It looks like there's still plenty of capacity left in station 2, so we are going to assign another task to station 2. Now, be careful. The eligible task right now is going to be D, E, and F. Because D, F have no 
process relationship. So it's totally okay to assign one of those three tasks to station two, and none of those three tasks are、uh, used more than sixty-one seconds. The question is which task we are going to assign to station two next. Remember the rule of thumb we talked about earlier. We're going to use the longest task time rule over here. Among those three tasks, D E F, D takes twenty five seconds, E thirty five seconds, F twenty two seconds. E has the longest task time. Based on this rule of thumb, we're going to assign E to station two. Task time of E thirty five seconds. Cumulative time is going to be thirty five plus. Thirty-five. It is seventy seconds. After assigning E to station two, how much time we have left in station two? Well, ninety-six minus seventy, twenty-six seconds. And it looks like we can assign another task to station two. Since E is assigned to station two already, what do we have left? It's D or F. Because we cannot work on task G or H just yet. Once again, here we're going to apply the longest task time rule. Between D and F, which one takes longer, 25 seconds or 22 seconds? Well, it's going to be 25 seconds,、uh, which is task D. Task time 25 seconds. Cumulative time is going to be 70 plus 25. It comes out as ninety-five seconds. After assigning D to station two as well, how much capacity does station two have left? Well, just one second. So there's nothing else we can do with station two anymore. We have to turn to workstation three. Okay, for workstation three,、uh, it has to work on task. F first because F is the only eligible task right now. Before we finish task F, there's nothing we can do about task G or H. So we're gonna assign F to station three. How long does it take? F takes 22 seconds. Cumulative time is going to be 22 seconds as well. After assigning task F to station three. The idle time at station three will be ninety-six minus twenty-two, seventy-four seconds. Next eligible task is going to be G, nothing else. So we're going to assign G to station three. G takes fifteen seconds. Cumulative time is going to be twenty-two plus fifteen. It's going to be thirty-seven seconds. Idle time. Ninety-six minus thirty-seven. Idle time is fifty-nine seconds at this point. Last but not the least, we're going to assign task H to station three. H takes twenty-three seconds. Cumulative time will be thirty-seven plus twenty-three. It is sixty seconds. The idle time. Ninety-six minus sixty, thirty-six seconds. Now that's it. We assigned all the eight tasks to each of the three workstations. Station A is going to work on task A and B. Station two will be working on task C, E, D. In the end, station three will be working on task F, G, H. And this is the、uh, task assignment based on the longest task time rule. And if you take a look at the, what we got in F column idle time, this is not a very ideal assignment of tasks. Why? You see, station one has six seconds of idle time. Station two has just one second of idle time. On the other hand. 
Station three has pretty long idle time, thirty six seconds. The tasks are not well balanced. Uh, in practice, chances are people are going to assign, for example, task F to station two and assign task C to station three. That way, the idle time is much more balanced. In case something、uh, goes wrong at one of those workstations,、uh, it's much easier to handle uncertainty. In the end, we are going to calculate the efficiency of this three workstation system. Here's how we're going to calculate efficiency. The formula for efficiency is sum of task times divided by number of workstations times cycle time. In our example, sum of task time is two forty-five seconds, and we have three workstations. Cycle time ninety-six seconds. The efficiency comes out as eighty-five point one percent.